Dwayne, it's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to be with you too, Russ. You had your 20th birthday in February, right? Yes, February 5th. All right. And I know that um, you've taken a couple of courses here at school. Yes, this is a call to I-10. Um, I got, I'm a freshman here at Crossroads Bible College also as well. Now, I know about five years ago, your life was pretty different, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And I know, it, uh, I know for a lot of people here, they can probably identify with that, that life can be really tough growing up. Yeah, it was tough. Um, my life growing up, I grew up on 42nd in Arlington uh, with my dad. My, my dad and my mom was never married, and they was, they, they was separated when I was born, before, before I was born. So it was rough growing up in that aspect without a mother and a father being in the same home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some, of the, some of the really bad opportunities that are available for young people, uh, those became part of your life, didn't they? Yeah. Um, I didn't have a lot of money growing up, so we was poor. My mom was in and out of shelters. Uh, my dad was a truck driver, so my grandparents really raised me. And they didn't have a lot of money either. They had a fixed income. So we, we didn't have a working shower. I got made fun of in school because I smelled. Um, it was just, I got bullied a whole lot in elementary. Hmm. Now, were you involved in church growing up? or No. I knew of church. Like, we went Easter, Christmas, you know, or we got invited by a family member, but I didn't grow up in church. And then you had a really interesting transformation, didn't you? Yeah, I can remember. Um, my friend Joseph invited me to this thing called Crew. It was called Student Adventure, but now it's called Crew. It's a, campus for, it's a campus ministry for high schoolers. Um, it's after baseball practice, and he asked me if I wanted to come. It was like a Bible study, and I said, no, I'm not with all that. Um, I'll just go home. He said, there's going to be some food there. I was like, I'm a, I am. I just, get, I, just, I just got out of practice because it's baseball practice. I'll, I'll check it out. There's a ride back home. He says, a ride back home, too. So I ended up going, and it was different. I didn't know there was Christians inside my school. And, and, and what happened from there? Uh, what happened from there, that was at Arlington High School. Um, I, I switched schools because Arlington High School got taken over by the, by the government, by the state. They took over Arlington High School, so I had to switch schools and go to John Marshall. And I wasn't a part of crew for a while until I seen the campus minister again, which is C.J. Neal. And I got excited. I'm like, all right, crew's going to be here too. So I went to crew there, and then I ended up leaving because of something happened in my life with my family. And when I left, Joseph and C.J. Neal, they kept in contact with me through Facebook, and they made sure that they would keep in contact. I would never respond because I didn't want to know about God at all because what happened in my life. So I ended up coming back to crew my junior year, and then that's when I heard the Lord telling me to go to church on one specific Wednesday. And, and let's elaborate on that a little bit because it's, it's a pretty amazing story. Well, in that transition, I'm also... I was involved heavily in drugs and gang violence, so I'm, I'm originally GD, which is a gangster disciple. Um, I was a guy you didn't want to see on the streets that was angry. I used to sell drugs. <laughs> I never shot nobody, though, but I came close to because I got robbed, too, as well, while I was selling drugs. So in that time period, um, while I was doing my drugs and, and gang banging, um, I, I was going to make my first robbery, and I'm 16 at the time. This is my junior year. I was going to do my first robbery to get some money because we was poor and we didn't know where we was going to go next. So I got tired of not having any money. So I was going to make my first robbery, me and my boys. And for three days straight, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. And for some reason, in study hall at Lawrence Central High School, because um, John Marshall, I wasn't in the district no more, even though I was right down the street. So I had to go to LC, which is completely different. But I couldn't eat, sleep. So I'm in study hall, and I heard, go to Bible study, go to church. Just in your mind? It, just in my mind. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't want to go to church because they're all judgmental. They judged us as a family because we didn't have clothes. When we went, we got made fun of. You know, they, they gave us mean looks. It wasn't like loving at all. So I didn't want to go. And I ended up going home. And I was like, I just got up and left. My, parent, my mom was like, where are you going? My, my siblings was like, where are you going? I'm about to go to church and just left out because they didn't really care what I did. I did whatever I wanted to because couldn't nobody tell me nothing. So I, walked, I passed up a church and walked to a church thinking, like, if they judge me, I'm going to fight this pastor and I'm going to shoot this church up. They judge me. And I walked inside the building. They looked at me, and then the pastor kept on teaching. I sat down, 
after the service, um, I talked to the pastor afterwards, and I told him, look, I'm not going to stop gangbanging. I'm not going to stop having sex. I'm not going to stop drugs. I'm not going to stop smoking. None of that. Like, I'm just not going to stop it. So this, this is me, and this is who I am. He's just like, all right, keep coming. And that was the end of the conversation. So I kept coming every Wednesday and also going back to crew every Tuesday. And so did it take a little period of time before God got hold of your life? Not really. Um, it took a few months. Okay. <laughs> the pastor invited me to a Sunday church service, and I told him not, I'm not with that because of my experience of being judged as, as a kid, even though I still was a kid at the time, but I see myself as grown. You know how that goes when you're a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought I was grown at the time, so I told him, no, I'm cool. I'm going to just stay in the Bible study. And they had Sunday church. One particular Bible study was April 4th, um, 16th of 2014. And I walked in and walked right back out. You know, full blown choir, pastor little got like a little suit on, they praising. I walked in the church and just walked straight back out. Like, I told this man, I told him I didn't want to do none of this. <laughs> but I already walked up here, so I might as well stay. So I stayed and I felt it pressing on me at the altar call to come up and surrender my life to Christ. And that's what I did. So then I surrendered my life to Christ, got saved at the age of seventeen. And I got baptized May 10th, a month after that. And, 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 yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then there was a, a point in time when there was a big period of your growing and your commitment to God and being turned around, et cetera. Tell about that. Um, C.J. Neal, the one that is a campus uh, crew minister, he made sure that I didn't stray away in the summer because the summer get hot. You got females, you got booty shorts, all that. So he made sure I didn't go back to my lifestyle. So he, was, he, he told me about this internship about three weeks in a row. Um, it's a summer internship where it's Mondays and Saturdays. It's, it's fr- not, not Mondays. It's Friday nights and Saturday morning. Um, we'll be reading the Bible and all this stuff. It wasn't appealing to me because I'm like, I don't want to do that. That sounds boring. And plus, it's Friday and Saturday. That's when I'm going to be getting busy. <laughs> so I ended up saying yes the last day of crew. Me and, me and my buddy, I just brought to crew, which was the last day. We both committed, me and him. And it was over the summer. I learned how to pray. I learned how to study my Bible. I learned how to be a servant in church and just be a servant altogether. It was a life-changing experience for me to learn more about God and learn more about who he sees me as. That's phenomenal. And now, as you're talking to people, uh, how do the conversations generally go? Well, now the conversations is um, when they come up to me and like they're having a bad day, like I work at Cracker Barrel right now. So if I see somebody that's having a bad day and I'm in retail, I'm the first person they see. So wherever I'm at, that's where the church is at because Christ is inside of me. And I just believe wholeheartedly that I can do greater works because that's, that's what he said in his Bible. So when somebody's having a bad day, I ask them if I can pray for them. They just brighten up, and then I'll pray for them. If they're, I met a lady that had cancer. I'll pray for her if I have time. I pray, I pray for her specifically at my job, and it's just like seeing people rejoice and be like, dang, he wants to pray for me? Like, what does this kid want to do? Because when people see me, they see my dreadlocks, and they see that I'm black, and they automatically get scared of me until I open my mouth up and tell them to love, share with them the love of Christ that Christ shared with me. So I can't judge anybody that judges me off, off back because of my appearance. That's what Christ has to show me. Yeah. So you're working now, working two jobs, mm-hmm. uh, planning coming back to school next fall. Yes. Uh, and uh, God's got his hand on, his, on your life. You want to uh, see what, what path that might lead in the next few years. Yes. Um, God has been, God is amazing. Like, he really transformed my whole life. Like, this is, this is my life. This is who I am. And I had a period of time to where I was away from the Lord. I actually failed here my last semester. You know, I know Dr. Rowe, I'm sorry. <laughs> but look, God was showing me about how faithful he is. And he wanted me to believe in him because I believe in him, not because CJ or any mentor that taught me, which led me to Christ, but he wanted me to build my faith up in him and make me strong. So now that I end up surrendering more stuff to him, I see him more clearly. Like, man, this is really my life. So now I'm more bold about who I am to other people. I don't have to be ashamed no more, as Paul was. Paul was never ashamed. That's what I was taught. Mm. So therefore, I should not be ashamed in front of men. So he won't be ashamed in front of me when judgment day comes. Because he's coming back. And the way I stay on fire is for him right now, 
is to live in expectation of him coming back every single second. Because we never know. The father has not told his son when he's going to send him back to come and get us. So therefore, I need to live in expectation now and do what he has for me today in order to stay lit so I don't have to be getting ready when he comes. So I already be ready. So that's where I'm at now with um, my walk with Christ. Amen. Amen. So, Dwayne, we're excited for you. We're uh, about 40 years ago. God did the same thing in my life real quickly after I'd been a skeptic for quite a while. And I, I know I had nowhere near the tough things that you had to come out of. Um, and our prayer for you is that God would make you strong and courageous to not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you. Thank you, man.